Ooh. Can let it through, but it is let through. Lance is going to be the return ban from Elite Eight, so Elite Eight clearly have a counter ready, as you said, right? Really well. Um, yeah, well, I, I, th I think it would most likely be first picked by Pride for the first tier. They weren't expecting that. They were expecting Black Feather to be banned away. Now they're at the position, like, right, 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 do we want to actually pick it? No, they don't. They're going to go for the Arden. So, Captain's way, way higher priority in this final game than we've seen in all the previous games. We saw Kestrel first pick, we saw Alpha first pick, all kinds of carries, but this time they're going back to the Captains. Yep, and as I said, you know, captains still play a fairly big role in the man in terms of which ones you pick up in Arden, quite powerful. I mean, we saw before, uh, it didn't work out in the end for the side of, I believe, in that previous match we saw for the side of uh, in J3X Inferno in that last fight. They did have the Arden available to them, but just not building up enough defense into the late game, I think, is what let them down. But I think Arden's just a great pick in that early game to really help you with playing that aggressive play style. So we'll see whether the side of 500 and First Legion go with that in terms of what they pick up. But the Black Feather does end up going through to the side of Elite 8. They didn't ban it out, so they left it on the table for them. And as I said, you know, if you're not going to ban it out, you're probably either just going to pick it up yourselves or in the case of 500 and First Legion, they didn't ban it out because I'm pretty sure they would have figured that Elite 8 would ban it, but instead they want to just go with their captain select first. But now means that the Black Feathers on the table, Vox, who's a great pick, has been banned out. And I think being on the red side for this first match, definitely playing into the hands of Elite 8. Yeah, B-side does seem to have slightly stronger draft capabilities this patch, obviously with the power picks. Uh, the power pick of Black Feather is, does favour A-side, because you can obviously first pick it. But now with the with they've, they can just pick their captain, maybe pick up the Grace or Lyra. We both work really well with Black Feather. Maybe something like a Finn could even work out, as uh, there are a few captains that have been banned away. And uh, I, I think if they just leave their last pick able to be counter, yeah, then they're, they're, they're in a really good position. So Elite 8 in a strong position in this draft, have a good captain, really strong laner, and now they have their last pick to try and counter. If they go for, if I was to first go for a dive comp, then you could pick up maybe a Rona, even go double weapon, or obviously you can't go Rhyme if that's been banned. But if you pick up, they go for a dive comp, don't pick a squishy backline mage as your... Uh, jungler and then it's pretty simple for elite eight to win this game and they're gonna go for the rona for five zero first you saw that band away a little bit but not picked up that much what do you think about this rona pick oh i'm not too sure about it you will have to be jumping up into the face of that black feather and with grace alongside them they're going to be up to have the holy nova available and should be fairly easy to land i mean rona especially once she's using the red mist is quite an easy target to hit with most abilities in that case. So I'm not too sure about that. I mean, the Vanguard is there to help Rona get out if need be. So, you know, it could be, it could work out for them. I'm just wondering what they're going to do to finish off this comp. And I was not expecting Alpha. If anything, I was thinking, you know, they could always pick up at Celeste and have some range, a backliner. Uh, I was thinking a bit more balanced, so you have that frontliner, you have that backliner, and of course being a CP hero, I was kind of just looking through my choices for which heroes are CP range and, you know, good into, with this kind of comp, you know, maybe provide a bit of CC, mm -hmm. and they go for the Alpha pick, so I'm just really confused right now. Yeah, that is very confusing draft by 501st. Definitely meant to desi design to throw off Elite 8. If I was Elite 8, I would have gone for an Ozo last pick. Ozo jungle, fine against Alpha, fine against Rona. Uh, really helps Blackfeather, really can sustain with Grace really well. Helps Blackfeather be able to build up his breaking point stacks. But they went for the Sky. Sky is a really good Rona counter because Rona has no chance of sticking on Sky. And Sky v Alpha is, I'm going to say, even. Is probably the best way to put it. Some people very vigorously tell me that Sky is better than Alpha. Some people say Alpha is a lot better than Sky. So we'll say they're even. It depends on how well you can play it. So that's a pretty good draft from Elite Eight. But yeah, fans are first. Really bringing out uh, very bringing out all the stops. Really bringing out everything that uh, they probably have in their locker. Now, is this going to be a lane Rona or a lane Alpha? Both seem equally ridiculous. So it's really anyone's <laughs> guess at this point. 
I I would say I believe it will be Elaine Rona just for mm. the sustain in her kit, and Alpha will be there with the Prime Directive to be that more of a ganker. I, that's how I see it, but it's a bit hard to say anything at this point with them pulling out this kind of comp. It's first of all triple melee, but then mm. it's also just full on engage and i guess you could call it a bit of a sustained team comp but there's also the burst in the alpha kit but it does ramp up in saying that so it's just quite interesting to look at and of course i don't think i've ever casted a match before for an arden rona alpha team comp uh, whereas we've seen the likes of black feather grace and sky and i do mm. agree with you on that point you made earlier of the uh, sky you know probably being a good pick into rona but as for the alpha i think alpha does have a lot of capabilities to stick to the sky and unless you're eating up the whole ford barrage then you are in a bit of trouble mm. but in this case is what you said it'll be down to a skill matchup it's kind of similar to the black feather to sky match as well yeah, I think Blackfeather is going to be really good against Alpha as well. Because one thing Blackfeather can do is if he executes Alpha at the right time, it can become almost impossible to get your ultimate off as Alpha. We've said in the previous game that Alpha didn't use her ultimate against the Keshul Scarf. Against Blackfeather, if he's got full broken heart stacks, you have to basically ult before he uses his A. Because if he uses his A, you're going to get executed, you're going to get put into your reboot, and then you're kind of useless. So it's really... You have to ult a bit, like quite a lot earlier than you think you should on Alpha against Blackfeather. So that's one thing that uh, they definitely need to work on, that they need to try and um, play properly 5 0 first to try and make sure they don't just let themselves get um, be free either Dragon's Eye stacks or Breaking Point stacks onto the Blackfeather and Sky. So I, I think in terms of draft, it's, there's no teams that come out ahead, mainly just because we don't know how strong this lane Rona is going to be for 5 0 first. Maybe it will be the best hero we've ever seen. Maybe it will just not work against the Black Feather. But the only way is to wait and find out. I don't expect that much aggression from either side. It's probably going to be quite defensive. Alpha isn't great early game. Sky isn't great at level 1. So probably going to be quite a defensive position. But we are now loading into the Halcyon Fold for the first game of the final series of today. And it's going to be an exciting one. Yep, it will be exciting indeed. That's one way to put it here. And I'm looking over at the side of Elite 8. You know, they've got good team comp there built up for them. I like the likes of Black Feather going alongside the Grace. I think it's another good pairing, such as the Grace with a Glaive. Of course, you don't have the CC available to you, but in this case, it is more reliant on the Grace landing those Holy Novas and providing an easier chance for Black Feather to track down their enemies. So. We will have to see how this match goes as Grace going very deep into the enemy jungle right now uh, and just causing some havoc and it's always fun to see Grace do this in the early game of course has for retribution but it looks like blood for blood going to be a bit stronger and I wouldn't have expected I, I mean Arden is he has that kind of early game power because his blood for blood perk works so well as of that when there's not much defense or I should say no defense at all for anyone in the match yet except Han Jaegers, he went and picked up that light armor, so proving me wrong like players always do. It seems like <laughs> casters can never get everything cr quite right. Uh, but it's interesting, you usually see the Grace being the one being aggressive, and that's what Anime Save Me is trying to do here. They're trying to do that, but they're not quite able to. Meanwhile, we do see Han Jaegers landing quite a few uh, nice hits onto Cassandra there, building up the Broken Heart stacks and actually getting a fair bit of damage down, but Jasmine... Mm -hmm. Um, the Arden is going to be there with the Vanguard soon to help protect them. Isn't going to use it just yet. Holding on to that one, being very yeah, Cassandra in a bit of trouble waiting for that faint of heart. Nope, Jasmine's just like, yeah, I can wait a bit longer before I'm going to that's Ooh, really good. And uses it at the last second. They are trying to definitely bait Han Jaegers into this one so they can get a bit more damage in return. But it does mean Cassandra's gone so low that they've already used their potion. They're already going to have to go back to base. But in return, they are able to pick up that. We do see Alpha and Sky, you know, in the jungle just uh, going through their lane farm, uh, through their jungle farm. And... It looks like they were going for that mid tree, and, and it, I believe official Heim was able to pick that one up. So only slightly ahead in CS now, and able to go back to base and pick up some more crystal bit. Uh, this will definitely help them into the early game, but you can see IC already going for that light shield on the 
alpha just to be I, I guess it's a bit more you're always in the face of enemy and it's a bit more of a safety thing but when you play alpha if you ever do mini do you like to go for more damage or do you still take that shield as a bit of a safety net I do like to play alpha quite a lot and I play alpha pretty much glass cannon um, yes, go for it. I would say that's a more fun way to play. Yeah, so yeah, it's not effect it's, it's not as effective. I definitely agree with you that you should build defense on your alpha. And you see, we've got two bruisers up against a bruiser in the sky. There's going to be a lot of defense built, but it's just more fun to go pure damage and trust your ultimate to give you tankiness. But that's not the right way to do it. So yeah, I see JL doing doing the right thing and building a little bit of tank before going into aftershock. But lots of damage in lane. Yep, and we do see the trade out there between Han Yeagers and Cassandra. Cassandra going low, but not giving up the fight is actually going to chase down Han Yeagers for the first blood. And it looks like this Rona may be paying off. We will have to see what happens when we get to the team fight stage, more or less, how things are going to break down as we see official Hind going up to this lane, trying to put the harass down, but not really being right now just holding Cassandra's push with these minions off until Black Feather is able to return to the lane but exciting to see the side of 501st Legion actually pick up the first kill for themselves yeah I think there was a slight misplay from Hunyegas he went in with the feint of with nowhere near enough damage or low health on Cassandra to execute the kill then he was just in a poor, in a bad position let himself get caught out Cassandra's got a full Serpent's Mask whereas Hunyegas has not and uh, is still working towards this. This is a good time for the side of Fazio first to fight. Alpha hasn't got um, hasn't got aftershock. Still needs another hundred gold to do so. And official Hind's level six, so this could be some fight in jungle. Yeah, official Hind will catch out the alpha and is going to put a bit of harass down there. Is anime save me alongside them and. Alpha not actually using the boots, but just getting that speed boost from the Vanguard alone is going to go back to base. Doesn't want to fight just yet, as you mentioned before, wanting to reach that power spike of game, but Aftershock at least. But look at this. Rona actually putting up a fairly good fight against Blackfeather, and I am surprised to see this. Uh, I guess I just don't get to see too many opportunities where Rona goes up against a Blackfeather in lane. So... It's surprising to see how well Cassandra is doing for themselves. Yeah, well, the important thing is that Cassandra's got a tier 3 item, got full Serpent's Mask, but nothing. He's only got Barb Needle, but Cassandra going in. Yep, and it looks like they're going in deep indeed. Hun Yeager's is going to get a fair bit of that back with the potion, however. But Cassandra, relentless as ever, also working on that farm, clearing it down. But there's going to be Sky rotating up to the lane, forcing Cassandra to use that own potion. Now there's the death from above, splitting the 501st team apart. And now we see that I see trying to jump in and Cassandra, it's just all madness up in the lane right now. Cassandra already with that red miss, but using the into the fray to actually get out of the fight. Meanwhile, Alpha going in deep, almost taking out Han Yeager's. Good job from official Hind there on the sky to be onto it with the target lock and for Barrage to keep them at bay. But now we see Blackfeather picking up that Serpent's Mask and Cassandra just doing so much damage to the enemy team of Elite 8. Although Elite 8 have such an aggressive build, it's also their falling here as they don't have any defense yet. Of course, Han Yeager's has gone and picked up defense, but still previous to that was so squishy to Cassandra. We will have to see how they face up against them now. Cassandra still looking for the fight, even though they only have Jasmine there with the Vanguard to help them. But it's going to be a bit poke and then the return to the base as they have 2,000 gold to spend for themselves. And they're going to go for that heavy steel and the blazing salvo most likely going for that breaking point. Yeah, I definitely think that's the smart item on Blackfeather. The fights aren't lasting that long at the moment. But, you know, once there's more defense built, these fights are going to last quite a long time. Rona is ahead in gold, despite the fact that gold is negligible. The, the, both teams are dead even. But uh, Rowan is definitely m much closer towards their breaking point than Blackfeather is. So they're going to be a little bit of poke from Elite 8. Yep, and we do see that in terms of that, as you mentioned, that both teams fairly close in gold as they are poking away. There's going to be the Holy Nova to knock up Cassandra and Jasmine 
Cassandra almost getting caught out in that death from above is able to get back to the base, uh, back to the turret in time with the use of boots. But I see on this alpha still being aggressive as ever. Does have the vanguard to help negate some of that damage. It's going to go in with a prime directive. We see anime save me is fairly low. Uses the divine intervention onto official hind. They're able to get out of the gauntlet, but meanwhile it's going to be Hun Yeager stuck in there, or is it the side of 500 and first stuck in there with him? There's a great use of a prime directive with the termination protocol. Almost picks up official hind, but the turnaround coming through from Elite 8. Will they be able to get a kill from it, however, as both teams so low at the moment. Prime Directive onto Anime Save Me, and <laughs> everyone just so low. Hun Yeager's finally managing to find a kill onto Alpha, and turns it around with the help of Official Hind onto that Rona, picking up another kill for themselves, now pushing the kill lead. But they're not even going to push this turret. All three of them returning back to the base, and Wow, if every fight is going to be as hectic as that, Mini Mida, you might need to help me out here. Yeah, definitely. I think the breaking point picked up by Rona would have been very useful in that previous uh, engage. I think IC is really comfortable on this alpha. You saw he was using core charge as effectively as he could, landing every single Prime Directive on someone. The ultimate timing with the Prime Directive was perfect as well, landing the Prime Directive damage and the ultimate damage onto Sky. It wasn't quite enough to finish her off. The only thing that 5 0 first need to focus on is their target focus. It was all off in the last fight. We saw Elite 8 focus Alpha down, then Cassandra down, then Alpha down again after she rebooted. And uh, A3 Jasmine was left kind of alive. Apart from now, Jasmine going to fall. So Elite 8, once again, they're just focusing the right people, whereas 5 0 first are kind of splitting around on everyone, which does happen when you're up against the sky because she can just run away from you. Now they might try and seize this tier, th tier 1 turret. Yeah, it is a bit of an interesting comp. You'd think that if the side of 500 and uh, First Legion were able to all go in at once and, you know, single focus down a hero, they can definitely take them down very quickly. They have the damage on their side, and they have the means of getting in there and staying alive once they're in there. The only problem is really getting onto those heroes, because in this case, you're going up against Black Feather and Sky. Black Feather obviously going to be able to get away with the Rose Offensive, and Sky, as long as they have target lock, should be safe. And I think Grace almost plays into a similar role of Arden, although not being able to directly shield you. It does have the ability to get in there and use the CC, as we see Rona taking a fight against Han Yeagers and falling down, and it looks like the Gauntlet going to be forced out from Jasmine because Han Yeagers is on the chase, able to pick up another kill, and we rarely see this Black Feather starting to kick off once they were able to pick up the Serpent's Mask into the breaking point, and they've even got Atlas Pauldron early on for themselves. Yeah, I see really was not able to fight Black Feather there. I see going in against Black Feather had 20 breaking point stacks. He fell off to 15, but then re-engaging the fight just worked. Missing the Atlas this could be a good time to fight. Yep, as we see a bit of poke going down, and Han Yeager's low on the back line. There's going to be the engaged, but they all jump into the Holy Nova. Anime save me, just going to be able to boots out there with the fountain, gets out alive, and we see the red mist coming through, but I see uh, uh, on that Alpha going in big, doing a lot of damage. Cassandra being able to pick up the kill might be able to find Anime save me as well, but is going to buy the clutch boots to run out of there, and it might be enough to save their life, and we now see the side of 500 and first knocking a chase onto official hind but anime save me staying nearby in case official hind gets caught out did use that protect protect his contract but it looks like i see gonna find them before the divine intervention gets down official hind using the death from above does catch out i see but there's gonna be the engage with the prime directive doesn't catch from out with the explosion. Han Yeager's nearby. Great use of that Surrey strike by the sky yes, to get around. Lovely. Good use of mobility then. Han Yeager's going in deep with the crystal sentry. Might fall to Cassandra. And they will indeed. But official Hein is still up trying to do what they can. Cassandra so low on the back line. Surrey strike not going to get them around there. And Cassandra could get caught out by anime. Save me. But it looks like they do have into the fray to get out of the fray over the wall. And now anime save me on the chase really not wanting to let this go as long as sky can pick onto a target and get that target lock might be able to go around with a surge strike but we do see icy rejoining back into the fight as they're up in lane they are close by and this could be the chance that you know elite eight say okay that's enough we're backing out of this one i think the fight is just about finished and yeah what a hectic fight official hein 
played that guy so well. It looked like he was dead. He was gone. He was stuck between uh, Alpha, who was rebooting, and a Rona by the sentry. And he went, no, 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 I just need to get my target lock on the backs and so we strike away from this. I'll be fine. Blackfeather came through, killing the Alpha, not quite having enough defense to survive through the Rona. But, and then the and then after that, you think, okay, Anime Sabi coming. He's got the boots. He's got tier two boots. He's going to try and chase down Cassandra. He's vanguarded. And then the echo on the vanguard keeps Cassandra alive. And just fantastic plays from both these teams. It really is uh, awesome to watch these fights breaking out. I see has got Aftershock, Dragon's Eye. So this alpha is going to be a menace to f contend with. But Elite 8, all three members infused. Let's fight. Yep, and they're going to jump on Cassandra as their first target. They're going to Red Mist as a defense protocol, and there's going to be the a Gauntlet coming down. Meanwhile, Icy trying to jump into the fight, but Echoed Gauntlet does catch out Anime Save Me, but meanwhile, Han Yeager and Official Hind haven't been touched during this fight. It looks like they might be able to pick up Anime Save Me, however, but meanwhile, Han Yeager is going to take down that Rona, and Icy, oh! quite use of the Prime Directive, is able to get a kill out of it. However, ended up underneath the turret with Han Yeager's unofficial hind alive. As I said, throughout that fight, no one really paying attention to Han Yeager's unofficial hind. They're really able to do yeah. their own thing and just get around with the damage they had, especially for Han Yeager's with a breaking point and, you know, just the general kit of uh, the Black Feather. It's going to stack up the longer the fight goes on. So that's just a good engage by the side of Elite 8 and bad focus from the side of 501st Legion, which I think you mentioned earlier on in one of the first few fights. Yeah, that is one of their main problems. I think we're seeing this point, Hunyager's why Blackfeather is being banned an awful lot. He just seems like they had almost the perfect counter because they were like, right, we've got this Rona. Rona will be, uh, Rona will be good. Rona will... Um, Pardon me, sorry. Rona will be going against Blackfeather in the early game. Maybe late game, Rona will be able to out-sustain him in this fight. But it's just not happening. Blackfeather's got more items because he's been uh, just getting the kills in these fights. But, and that means he's got his breaking, he's got his, uh, breaking point and his bone sore. The longer these fights go, the better it is for Blackfeather. But it's meant to be good for Alpha in long fights. So they're really... Fives are the first one stuck in a position where they have to try and burst Black Feather with a comp that just isn't designed for it, and there's going to be another fight. Oh, this time they're jumping onto Icy instead, but there's going to be the Holy Nova to knock up Cassandra. They have to use the Red Mist instantly, but going to get taken down so quickly by that death from above. Icy trying to run away from the fight, does have full Broken Heart stacks on them, and is going to be put into that infinite reboot stage. More than likely did use the Termination Protocol before going down, but you were trapped in between all three members of Elite Eight this time. There's going to be the Ace, a perfect clean ace just as cracking comes up it's playing right into the hands of elite eight at this point and they're going to be able to push on through to the anchor turret more or less i'm not sure whether they'll be able to finish it off but if the side of 500 first decide to really challenge a fight here as the as elite eight push in with this kraken um i don't think they can win right now so far we've been seeing the side of Elite A just come out on top of these fights over and over again. It's only if they're ever able to separate Elite A that they might have a chance at winning and picking up on those mistakes. But right now Elite A are going to be so stuck together as they push in with this Kraken, they might just be able to finish it. Yeah, they might be able to finish the game. It looks like the fight's going to break out straight away. Yep, and Anime saved me holding on to that Holy Nova for now waiting for the engagement from the side of 501st rather than going in themselves. The early use of the Divine Intervention, it will not be echoed in fact, so uh, Anime Save Me does not have an echo available for themselves. So it looks like they would be building to that with the Void Battery, but that does mean it will be down for the fight, so they need to be a bit more careful on the side of Elite 8 if they want to win this one out, but Sky not getting targeted by anyone. Right now they're just all trying to get on top of Black Feather, but that's exactly what Elite 8 wants, is Anime Save Me easily able to land the Holy Nova. Black Feather picking up heroes left and right, getting the ace, and Elite 8 are going to take the first game. Yeah, well played by, um, by Elite 8 in the end. They really just, they were just awesome, really. Blackfeather was amazing, he played, he played like Blackfeather should. A little bit in the early game, that white, how you, uh, how you go against the Rona. Rona's going to have a little bit of early game pressure. Can't be as aggressive as uh, you can in the late game. But once it got to that late game, it was just impossible. And yeah, because in some team fights, he didn't even use his fate of heart until right at the end to execute someone. 
He was just loads offensive, loads offensive, couple of basic attacks. You're dead, let me switch to the next target. I've got 15 breaking point stacks. Let's win this fight. And I highly doubt we're going to be seeing Blackfeather getting through the next draft because as a Elite 8 side, we know they will first pick it, which means 5 0 first are basically forced to ban Blackfeather. They had everything they knew to try and counter it. Uh, their entire comp, I'm sure, was to try and counter Blackfeather. Didn't work out in the end. And yeah, I think we'll be seeing a lot more Blackfeather uh, being, being banned away in the rest of the matches. Yeah, and you can really see how that grace just played into the comp of Elite 8 so well in terms of defense and offense. It really opened up the chances whenever the side of... Uh, whenever the side of 500 and First Legion would try jump onto Elite 8, they'd go for the Black Feather all the time. And that meant that Grace was always right next to them, ready for that, ready for the moment to use the Holy Nova, and then it just knocks everyone up because they all have to jump in together, the Arden, the Alpha, the Rona. They go in as a team, and that's why you'd think, theoretically, maybe this engage comp could work. And that's why in the draft phase, I was like, okay, let, let's see what they've got. Let's see if they can pull it out. But then just when it came into the match, it was too much in favor of Elite 8, just through the whole uh, kit, through all their heroes and the overall draft. I mean, <laughs> it would be a bit rough <laughs> to say you were rooting for the side of 501st with this draft they pulled out with not really much balance to it. Yeah, definitely something they've tried out. The lane Rona looked really promising. It worked well early game. But late game just did seem to fall off a bit too hard, especially against someone like Blackfeather. So yeah, I, I, I highly doubt that coming into the second draft, 501st won't ban Blackfeather because um, if they let Blackfeather through, they really have to come up with something else to try and counter it in the lane. They tried their Rona, they tried their Rona Alpha, and it, yeah, it didn't work. So maybe just banning it away is, is a lot simpler. And obviously, uh, Elite Eight will have plans other than Black Feather. But it does seem like quite a simple draft for you if you just manage to pick up probably the strongest hero in the game. Because the Black Feather was seen as too strong in when 2.9 was first released because he had 20% execute damage on his Faint of Heart uh, based on health. And that was too much she would be doing one and a half thousand damage here and 1.2 thousand damage there on captains and on junglers just way too much damage but in some of the team fights he wasn't even using the faint of heart um, to kill people he would kill rona without needing it just one b and a couple of volts with some basics rona's gone down and so blackfeather is still strong without without having that massive burst of the faint of heart and even so 10 percent health is still uh still very significant Yes, it's still Black Feather is very much so in the meta, a very strong pick as always, and we will have to see with that uh, whether the side of 500 and first, you know, as you said, it's almost a must that they have to go through with the first Black Feather ban. But, yeah, yeah, we are going that. to see because the draft is ready. So without further ado, let's head on into the draft. So this time we do have Elite 8 on the blue side and 501st on the red. And this means that, you know, really they could go with any kind of ban for the side of Elite 8. Do you think we'll see that Catherine ban come through again? Uh, or a Lance ban is still focused on those Romas. And now mm -hmm. here's the thing that you mentioned. They just have to ban Black Feather. If they don't, it's going to go through and they have to find some way to counter it. So I think if they're not going to be able to play it, to definitely ban it, which is what they're going to do now. And do you yeah, have any really... ideas what you think could be the first picks? Well, Catherine obviously could be the first pick because Elite, uh, sorry, Five Zero First banned it in the first game. So now Elite Eight know that Five Zero First don't want to play against it. So it might be a smart pick if that's something that Elite Eight do want to play. Obviously, Five Zero First kind of lost their chance to get Black Feather. They were first pick, but they're going to stick with the Arden Elite Eight, thinking that's well, is a is a very strong capture at the moment. Most teams like playing Arden with Blackfeather off the table. There aren't any uh, other seemingly too strong heroes in Southeast Asia, so this means Arden's a fine pick. I think Catherine, uh, a Catherine pick, and then a Cruel ban would be really smart from Five Zero First because if you ban Cruel, then that baits the enemy to ban Rhyme, and that means you get Catherine and Batiste. So uh, that would be a nice draft. I think if they don't ban Cruel, then this is going to be most likely be a Batiste ban from Elite 8. 
Yeah, well, this Arden pickup being kind of, uh, you know, it's like the Arden pick is a bit more of a safety pick to really he's going to throw at you because Arden just works well with a lot of different comps uh, and is that kind of hero that allows your uh, team to play more aggressively and not so much more as if you picked the grace and as why i mentioned maybe one of grace's flaws is the fact she can't directly protect her teammates so the enemy could play into that fact so i see as to why the side of elite eight didn't go for the grace pick initially also the gauntlet if used uh, properly into the late game just great zoning potential uh, defensively and offensively and there's going to be the rhyme ban followed through with a celeste ban and a vox pickup so do you think that they're still going to leave the batiste on the table or mm. some mage or cp jungler of course for the side of 501st that's going to have that kind of uh well cc capability mm. Or do you think they're going to try pick it up for themselves on the side of elite eight more to just counter pick away from the enemy yeah, I think the the play from 501 first is we don't need to pick Batiste now. He's not the strongest hero. He got nerfed a couple of patches ago in terms of crystal power ratios. So he's not necessarily needed to be picked. But if Elite 8 let it through and it works in the draft, then why not pick Batiste as our jungler? They just want to secure the Vox Ooh, for themselves. And and yeah, it's so. that steal mm. as they pick up the Batiste, as we were speculating might happen. But now the question is, what do you fill that final spot with? What kind of CP hero has good CC at the you moment? Go for, I think you go for a mage. His mage is counter Batiste really hard. If you go Scarf or Sest, then Batiste is never going to get his ordained off. His bad mojo will barely do anything compared to what your poke is as a Scarf or Celeste. And the reason why they didn't pick Batiste now is they can change their comp up. They can go with a poke kill. They're not the strongest in the meta as compared to what Assassins are. But it still can work really well. It would work alright with Vox. And um, it basically becomes a Kestrel V, whichever, assassin, uh, sorry, whichever mage you pick in a skill shot war. Which I think is a, a, fine, a fine trade, especially given you've got Vox against Batiste on the, in the other fight. Yeah, and we will have to see what they go for. They are also, you know, taking their time to think about this one. They do go for the Samuel in the end, but Oblivion is there. Uh, you know, good crowd control abilities on the side of 501st Legion, where they have the Blast Tremor, they have the uh, Wait for it, so two silences already, and then they have the Oblivion for sleep. So if they're able to chain those correctly, they might be able to make some big plays. And I think, you know, Samuel's a good pick in the sense that he really can keep his distance from Batista. And of course, having that level two power spike, he might even be able mm. to beat out the Batista early on. We'll have to see how it goes down in the jungle. And yeah, it really depends on, uh, it really uh, depends the, on who, oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, they do have the Vox and the Kestrel, which I think are both very good picks in the current meta. More so Vox being more popular as to move into the late game, but that burst potential from that Kestrel on the side of the Batiste having the ordained, you could also do similar. So I think both teams drafted just pretty well. Yeah, it really depends on who has, uh, on what range you are. If uh, if you're at close range, then Batista is clearly going to win that. Whereas if Samuel can keep his distance, it will be pretty easy at level 2 for him to win that fight. Of course, if uh, Batista times his ordained with the Drifting Dark, that can be really annoying for Samuel. He can be stuck outside the Drifting or forced to be stunned, which gives Batista the advantage. So it's going to be gonna be an interesting trade. I hope they do fight at level 2, because both players can think that they're going to win, which means there's going to be a really interesting fight over that, possibly over the Elder Tree and possibly over the um, jungle of the enemy enemy hero so really interesting to see what happens in lane i have to put the edge onto onto kestrel in general in a 1v1 versus the vox but obviously if vox manages to dive and get within range of kestrel it's tough because kestrel wants to kite away wants to uh, go into active camo wants to glimmer shot from distance doesn't want to be in a close quarters 1v1 versus vox yeah and I do think that uh, it will be kind of even him. We will look for some early game aggression, more or less. And especially with uh, Catherine for the side of uh, 501st Legion, it would be nice to see them, you know, trying to always play aggressively, try to build up those stacks, especially now that they're not going to be 
as much and they're not going to give you as much armor and shield you have to go back to really trying to get more to make it more of a useful hero mm. perk uh and it's a bit of an interesting one with Catherine. i do see that she is still a strong captain don't get me wrong but i do think that other captains such as the lance who got banned out in this match lance arden and grace sit slightly above her in my opinion but do you see why it would be the priority pick and ban for the side of 501st? Yeah, I think it makes sense because they, their draft strategy was let's bait Kath Batiste. And um, they, they did that. They picked the Catherine to bait either the Batiste ban or the Batiste pick from, from Elite 8. And they did. Elite 8 were forced to pick the Batiste so that 501st couldn't have it. And that's the main reason why Catherine tends to be picked up at the moment. It's not just as a hero by herself. She's quite good against Kestrel, which I guess works well if you guessed Elite 8 were going to play Kestrel. But it's generally to, to try and force one of the enemy's bans or picks onto that Batiste, because we've seen that combo before. It's so annoying to play against, especially with Echoes and with the nerf to Crucible, that um, they, it's now worse for a jungler or a laner to pick up Crucible for themselves. I mean, the Echo Silence is almost certainly going to go through. There's no way to Echo Activatables. That's not a thing. So you only get one Crucible, but Catherine gets two Silences. Now we are loading in to the house to unfold for the second game of the final series and possibly the final game of today. Really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in this early game. Passive at level one, but probably going to be aggressive at level two. Yep, and the skins in this match are <laughs> definitely something to look at. Look at that Batiste skin, the new mm. Halloween skin, looking very cool and very suitable for the Batiste, I think, uh, to have that kind of skin available to him. Uh, but I don't think in this situation skins will win. If so, we do have uh, both teams even on skins. You could save a tear free skin for the Arden. And will it do if he's able to steal? And he does not steal it, so no. It's no skins not are not Elite even. They've lost. <laughs> Elite 8 have got the best have skin. To, There's no question have here. To see how it goes here as uh, Jasmine stunning up anime save me as they push in and Revenger just trying to get some poke damage, some chip damage more than anything down. There's the real poke coming through by the side of Elite 8 and the Ordain landing on Cassandra, forcing them into early fight. They got the level 2, but they get shut down instantly by Han Yeager's for the first blood and Elite 8 pushing in so aggressively here with I mean why not you have the a Batiste on level 2 which could almost be arguably a stronger level 2 than the side of the Samuel level 2 and you were right about that when you said it's all about the range by fighter and by going in as a team having that Arden there to vanguard you into the fight you were definitely going to be able to get up to the enemy's faces and lock them down and then just push through together as a whole team as we saw Kestrel mm. as well uh, being able to yeah. land the glimmer shots but 501st doing this in return to Han Yeager's who's going to fall to the side of uh, well 501st indeed and Cassandra needing to be careful here they, they did pick up a kill in return but are going to hand their life over instantly and maybe even revenge out by the merciless pursuit and they're not able to catch him out there's going to be a bad mojo but it will not hit and now elite eight do have the opportunity to go into samuel's jungle however so falling up in the lane was not very wise for him as we now see batiste going to get the upper hand and get this mid triant yeah i think that oh level one right, revenge is going to die nice action come out kill that kill but the, the, the early game rotation from elite eight was better in this uh, scenario they took their backs together took the front healing camp and as i said with the changes to experience doing that is enough to get both your laner and your jungler to level two immediately and so obviously cassandra and revendrex were busy taking the elder tree and their own healing camp which is not enough to get level two as quickly as elite eight can so elite eight coming through trying to steal the tree but it didn't really matter they were just happy to fight and deal so much damage because they were level two uh five zero first were level one and really that's not even a question who's going to win that uh early game now cassandra could be caught out by that ordained when they do get caught out indeed jasmine trying to body block there does manage to do a good job of it and actually forcing official hind back right now anime save me does use a protector contract but doesn't have the vanguard up just yet to keep official hind safe but it should be enough for them to stay in the fight they use their own potion as well and going in once again just the landing board Dane, trying to put the pressure up onto the lane but right now 500 first with no real reason to back out of this fight just not gonna get stunned up from something as simple as that 
official hind, however, trying to stick into this one, knowing that they have the advantage if they can push the aggression and force a stun out of someone, and they get it onto Jasmine, and that's the power of this comp as a whole. It's really working out for the side of the fish, uh, for the side of Elite Eight, especially if this Batiste, but need to be careful, Cassandra and the Drifting Dark has the empowered Malice and Verdict is going to not get the kill, however, and gets shut down by Hun Yeagers, but Revenger X going to be able to pick up every uh, kill in return, and meanwhile Anime Save Me is trying to back up the base. This minion wave will be pushed in, and they might be able to get some early damage onto it, whether Batiste will go up to it to defend is going to be the question, and it looks like they will just making sure that 500 and first don't get too ahead of himself here. Yeah, Batiste is, uh, it's, it's nice for him to go to lane there, make sure. But the real problem there was that Kestrel was trying to make the plays, didn't quite have the damage to, uh, to execute Vox in, the, in that straight one versus one. Vox slightly higher health at the start. But now both teams are going to go towards the jungle, well, Elite 8 going to go farm the jungle up together. And it's a fountain already on Anime Sapi, but nothing on Jasmine. So despite that trading kills, Fazio first is certainly behind in gold. Samuel's now picked up his Frostburn, so that's not a big damage power spike, but it's a really nice utility power spike. Frostburn hasn't seen that much play on mages because it just doesn't do as much damage. And um, the, the slow is nice, but it doesn't, as I said, it, it, it just tickles. So Niegas isn't really being hurt by that, but there's going to be a fight. Yep, and we see the, wow, great use of the first some shade on to Cassandra. The whole team of 500 and first Legion getting caught up in that, but the kill going over as Cassandra falls. Revenger X soon to follow suit if he's not careful, but Official Hind going to go into the backs using this as an opportunity to just further push that gold lead and that early game advantage that the side of Elite 8 already have. He's getting greedy, taking the whole of it and is going to have to actually know that Cassandra is going up to the lane to defend against the rest of Elite 8's assault. So just a real fluid attack from the whole of Elite 8 uh, all around. They might even pick up a kill onto Jasmine here, if Jasmine isn't careful. There's a one-shot, one kill that isn't going to land, however. But we do see 500 and first regrouping. Revenger X going in. There's going to be the Oblivion. It catches out Kestrel, who is asleep, but they were invisible. So no follow through by 500 and first official. Hein pushing in deep now with that ordained. And Revenger X just standing still in it, having to take shots from the Kestrel. Whether they get stunned out or whether they're just zoned in it, it's a great ability and a great team comp overall coming out from the side of Elite 8. And they're just playing it very well as we see here. They go in, take out Box instantly. Use for ordained. They might even get the turret as well. It looks like they will. Cassandra not able to defend that one. And Official Hind looking for more. Manages to get the Fearsome some Shade into the turret to Stun wow. up Cassandra and Elite A just pushing through. You said we would have an aggressive early game, but 10 kills at 6 minutes on the side of Elite A, only 2 over to the side of 500 first is a bit more than aggressive. This is just yeah. slaughter coming out from the side of Elite A. It looks like both Carrie and Jungler from Elite A will do the, the uh, one kill a minute game. Where they get one kill for every minute they get. Both got five kills, seven minutes in, so they're getting close. If one play, one player gets a triple kill pretty soon, then they will be at that point. Official Hind though with doing so much work on the Batiste in that fight, five hundred uh, burst damage onto the Samuel. He should buy some defense items that might help him out against this uh, Batiste. And Revengex will Ooh. not will be able to put him in the end. One shot onto Cassandra, so Elite could try and fight or maybe push uh, get a gold mine with their uh, with their gold lead. And official Hind just harassing Jasmine at this point, making sure they don't go back to base, catching them out in that ordain. Jasmine just staying around in it, but that Storm Guard not going to last for long, already taking a lot of damage and not much actually being reflected back. Surprisingly, though, official Hind with a Shadow Glass, you'd expect it. And there's the damage coming through. The Arden with the double kill. He got the gauntlet. They might even give him the triple. Anime save me. Do it! Jump! Yeah, and he gets the triple. Supports knee kills as well. I remember that used to be a saying. And it's definitely coming back here with anime save me. And of course the damage overall coming out from the whole team. 
of Elite Eight is just immense. And it's what I like to see when teams pick up this Arden. You know, as I mentioned in the draft phase, that Arden's a very flexible Roma, so a good first pick, but also allowing your carries and your junglers to go for a more aggressive build. And they're rarely not holding back on anything. We see Han Jaegers mm. not at ounce of defense. Meanwhile, official Han, you know, he has to be in that front line, so having that reflex block isn't that bad. Yeah, it's going to be another fight. Jasmine blast Tremor. Pushing around, yes, uses the Blast Tremor to engage, but there's going to be the Oblivion in return. Gets blocked out. Fischl Hunt not able to actually get onto Cassandra this time. Could be dangerous, but they do manage to get the gold payout, and they might back out of this fight. Fischl Hunt gets the Vanguard onto him. It's going to go towards Cassandra, just trying to force him back out. That Drifting Dark is on the edge of it, and now Hunt Yeager's joining in on the fight. They're going to be able to find the kill onto someone eventually, but meanwhile, Vox left up in his own. I mean, Vox playing this one smart, knowing that they aren't winning the team fights at this point in the time. But, mm. you know, we can get money still from gang objectives and we're getting objectives. Hey, you know, what always wins games, gang yeah. objectives. And Revenger X doing a good job of pushing that lane back up in favor of them. They still are down a turret against Elite Eight, but not a bad idea there, as we saw Jasmine and Cassandra. Meanwhile, I, I would say they did fall to Elite Eight. But they were more buying time for 500 first, so it's not lost for them yet. Yeah, I think Kestrel was thinking about going up to lane, but ended up. Not <gasps> oh my! The damage onto Revenger X coming out from Official Hind. That's going to be the Gauntlet trapping out Cassandra and there. Jasmine going through with the reflex block, able to escape it. Official Hind might fall, but they use their own reflex block and they're going to be alive. There's the double kill going over to Hun Jaegers and just. The damage to start that fight out coming through from Official Hine onto Revenger X. Revenger X trying to match damage for damage, but <laughs> right now Elite 8 are so far ahead. They're almost hitting the 10k gold mark at 10 minutes. Uh, they're at 28.4 over to 18.6. They they're basically there. They just got yeah, their this... turret and they're basically there now. They're gonna grow, probably grab the gold mine or just get their backs, but that'd be stupid. Why just why grab your jungle when you can? fight again. Go in, try and kill someone, and uh, Batista decided that 720 damage was not enough. He wants an extra Heavy Prism and Infusion. There's been no defense picked up, so that 720 is probably going to go up to about 800 with an Empower Bat Mojo. But there's another fight, a fight going out in lane. Oh man, the team has defense at this point, and Batiste going on the back line with Ordain does manage to catch out Samuel in it, but he's going to get taken down by Hun Jaegers before he even gets stunned up by that. Meanwhile, Revenger X on a sliver of health, just trying to run away from the enemy team. Will he be able to make it as we see Jasmine getting locked down by the Ordained, and one by one they're falling. Revenger getting spotted out, and there's the chase for Vanguard onto Hun Jaegers. It's just going to be one shot, not even a glimmer shot, just right in the back where the arrow takes him down. It isn't the ace, however, as Cassandra back up on the fold. Jasmine somehow able to escape that one, but only for a while longer. They're just playing with their food at this point. And Cassandra might be able to turn this one around. They just need one more shot, but Kestrel going to go into the active camo. Gets out of there. One shot, one kill. Not going to land up. But this is a choice that 500 first playing a very risky game. I think they feel that you know, we're so behind on uh, gold. We can't risk to build any defense. We have to try mm. and keep up with damage. But they're we're, still we're, ahead. It doesn't feel like it, it, doesn't feel like it would do anything, does it? It doesn't yeah, feel like defense would help Han you. Look at who has that Sorrow Blade double Tyrant's monocle. And then Revenger X still being behind that because he only has a breaking point and Tornado Trigger. And we see Elite 8 going in once again. There's the Ordained on the back line onto Samuel. Great communication through Elite 8 as they take him down instantly. They're going to follow through with the kill onto the Vox. And now they're just chasing down Jasmine for the final kill. They get stunned out by the Ordained. There's nowhere to run. There's the trip kill going over to Hunt Jaegers and it's only 12 minutes 45 in. They don't even have to push through the anchor turret. They're going to move on to these base turrets. They have 3 seconds until Cassandra's up and 4 until Revenger X. So they have more than enough chance to finish out this game but we'll see whether there's anything that 500 first can do with their dying breath. It looks like Oblivion going to go down. It does get blocked out. Cassandra going low. This could be the chance. Official Hine also fairly low. But meanwhile, we see Revenger X low. And Cassandra has healed up here. They could push him with the Drifting Dark, but can't get caught out in that Oblivion. Instead, get pushed back by the Fearsome Shade. 
Sandra has an opportunity, needs to find the hits, but there's a Fountain from Anime Save Me just baiting in the team of 500 and first. Meanwhile, Fountain not quite up, another seven seconds for the side of 500 and first. Catherine needs to stay alive, but Vox gonna get shut down before that. Kestrel going in big, getting the Vox, getting the Samuel, moving on to Jasmine, getting another triple kill. And that is more than likely going to end the game or end my shoutcasting career because I'm gonna lose my voice. That is more than two kills a minute in total oh game. My. 29 kills, oh. almost dead on a 14 minute game. Oh, and Kestrel! With round of applause ridiculous. you have to give to Kestrel. They did win out the one kill per minute game. He did. Sorry, Kestrel did the plays. But he's got the 15 assists per minute. <laughs> And still got... nine kills to his name, so great job there as well. But overall, Elite Eight just playing that comp to perfection. You know, 500 first, they did the draft right. Uh, they had the right idea there. They ended up forcing the Batiste pick onto Elite yeah. Eight, but ended up playing against them. And it's so just... Wow, but <laughs> I, I'm just impressed by the damage that came out across the board because no one had, like, a shred of defense except for the Romas. Yeah, that was definitely uh, nice to see over 800 damage. That was lovely to see on the Batiste.